I got, little, I got a little British song for you guys. Recognize this? Can everyone test it already? I. Charlie can wait. She, she no, it's, it's too late. late She's on 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 the oh. We sound like a bunch of drunks Good. just released from the pub. Welcome to the Honest Designers Show, your transparent look into life as a modern designer. My name's Tom Ross, and I'm the founder at designcuts.com. And this week, I'm joined by my fellow Brit and hand lettering expert, Ian Barnard, American retro design expert, Dustin Lee, and the incredibly talented South African illustrator, Lisa Glantz. In today's episode, we talk all about mindset. So without further ado, let's get into the show, people. We're back. We got Lisa back. The boy gang is no more. Thank goodness for that. We did, needed did you. you we missed you. Did you behave last week? No, we didn't. It wasn't the same. It went, we got silly. We had to use one of Dustin's uh, toys to... Um, <laughs> oh, we didn't no. have to, we, we got to. Do I want to know about this toy? Or? <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. Okay. Um, so I'm going to throw out a caveat here. This is entirely my fault. Um, it's okay. This is going to be a... This is going to be our shortest episode ever because we may have got slightly disorganized lately. We may not have that many episodes in the bank and I may be going on vacation (laughs) next week. There's a lot of maybes there. (laughs) I also may be a headless chicken for this entire month, it seems. So um, what that means is we have about 35 minutes right now. And that's for two episodes <laughs> because we don't want to skip a week. So normally you get one hour of absolute goodness from us. I think this is going to have to be like two 15, 20 minute episodes. So to make up for it, we're going to try and make them as value packed as possible. It's not the guys. They're all lovely. They're reliable. It's just my ridiculous schedule right now. So all good, it is Tom. what it is all good. for all the Love Island fans out there in the UK. <laughs> it is what it is. If you know what I'm talking about. Um, so how are you guys anyway? Good. Great. You sound like you really are a headless chicken. Uh, yeah. It's, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'll put it this way. I'm staring at a plate of... I mean, this ties in well to uh, today's episode on mindset, right? Yeah. I maybe am not feeling the most creative because um, I'm staring at a plate of half-eaten food next to me. That is my lunch and it's 5 p.m. And that hasn't been ouch, eaten. Ouch, ouch. And I think I had lunch, I had breakfast at like 1 p.m. or something. So that's where my mindset is. How are you guys doing? Are you feeling like creatively inspired and, you know, in that flow state and all good? I am. How are things going? I've been hitting it lately. Have you? Yeah, What's I've been working on learning some, oh, come on. learning some fonts, learning how to make some fonts. And uh, I've been playing with a bunch of astute graphics tools and to make them. And it's been really fun. Sounds okay, good. no one likes to hear that. <laughs> I'm not even happy for you, Dustin. Oh, well, like, normally like, and I, and, and that never happens, so it's very rare. <laughs> okay, I am happy for you in that case. <laughs> I'm also kind of like in a good space, but I had to work at it um, to yeah. get there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so how, how did you work at it? Uh, a lot of self-talking to do that. Because um, mm-hmm. I actually, it sounds bad, but I shouldn't be in a good space, but I am actually... If that makes sense. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, just all this stuff going on business wise, things are changing. Um, you know, personally, like we're between two houses. So I feel like totally all over the place. Um, ach, my, little, my little pooch, she's ill. Um, so she, that's not going so good. And yeah, there's a whole lot of stuff going on at once. Um, but I think it's because I got a like a really nice project on the go, and I've decided to really just focus on that because, because I, I mean that's what we're talking about about today, aren't we? It's like what do we do to get ourselves out of that funk and still be creative when there's so much stuff going on around you? And I've yep. realized that you actually can't split your. I mean, it's not a revelation, but it's difficult <laughs> to <laughs> it's difficult to apply. It's like you can't really split yourself up into all those like 
things that are going on in your life because if you do you, you you there's no way you can be creative um so I really have to when I sit down and work I'm trying to be focused and it's kind of working. yeah yeah you're talking about spreading yourself too thin yeah emotionally because I mean you know if there's a whole lot of stuff going on like you your mind isn't really present when you're supposed to be creating so mm-hmm. you don't get anywhere you just like I don't know if you guys ever experienced that you just find yourself like going nowhere fast and it just feels like you are frantic but you actually haven't produced a thing of yeah oh yeah yeah. that's pretty much my week isn't that life (laughs) that's how it feels like my life has been yeah (laughs) (laughs) you know something i i heard a um i don't know if i called a mantra i think it was from uh it was from some book about stoicism you know I, i listen to a bunch of those they're kind of trendy right now and um they had said, said something that I found really useful, which was instead of saying, say, like, as I've been working on these fonts, for instance, it would be easy for me to say, think, I never be able to make a font as good as Ian does. I don't, I can't do that. He's so far ahead, right? So like, instead of saying, like, I wish I could be as good as, say, Ian, who, or whoever's listening that's great at it, reverse it around and say, help me to not desire to be as good as Ian. Um, which, which sounds counter like negative in a way, but it's mm. just like, yeah. it frees you up because then like, you're like saying like, help me not desire this. And then by not desiring something, it gives you the freedom to do it in your mind because, yeah. and then it magically becomes easy. Like, because you're not fighting against something, mm-hmm. you're asking for something yeah, to go away as opposed to asking to get something you don't have. It's, it's not the pressure. Um, yeah. Or you, you could, you could lower the bar and be like, well, I don't want to be as good as Ian, but. I'm going to aspire to be as good as Liam because he's pretty dreadful. Yeah. And this is just some random guy that I made up on, on Instagram. I, I thought you were going to say someone. I was like, it's really harsh. <laughs> yeah, harsh, Say this yeah, Liam, Liam guy. Liam, if, if you're out there um, listening, Liam, you suck at fonts. <laughs> or Dustin, you could, you, could like, you could separate it completely by saying, Ian doesn't feel he's really as good a font designer as um, Sam from Set Sail Studios. So unlucky to him. So you could just like <laughs> divert it completely off yourself. <laughs> yeah. And I, th- I think today what we're kind of talking about in a nutshell is the human condition because it's all well and good. We can read all the books. We can give all the advice on this podcast and say you should be doing X, Y, Z. These things are going to help your creative career. You need to practice this much. You need to improve this much. You can do this to price yourself. You need to get out of your comfort zone, pitch in these ways. Like everything we've preached on this show for like over two years now, we could condense into like hundreds of bullet points. But we are not machines that can just systematically work through those bullet points. Like we get sick. We might get depressed or suffer with mental health. We might get burnt out. We might get really inspired and then find like a, a thing that you know is a huge stumbling block we might we might lose some passion and have to pivot all of these fallible things for me encapsulate the human mindset and the fact is like mindset is the whole game whether it's what we all do business-wise or creativity i feel like if your mindset is good then everything else kind of stems from that and that's where it works Mm -hmm. but you could have all the structure and all the frameworks and know all the stuff to do but if your mindset is wrong then game over. It's weird that it's only, it feels like it's only in certain industries that mindset is actually quite, a, is a bigger thing than other. Because like, if we could talk about my builder, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't, he, he don't sort of talk to a builder and go, oh, I don't know, I don't know if my, my brick wall is going to be good as, you know, Dave over here or, or you know, Simon over here. I, I, actually, I don't know. I don't think I can do it because I don't feel like I'm good enough. You know, mm-hmm. you, you never, you never hear or have that conversation with someone mm. where you, you might, you know, you regularly do with sort of creative types. So it's weird. That yeah, that- uh, it very, very true. But I guess it could be worse. We could be like in the Wimbledon tennis final or a heavyweight boxer or something like that. Because for us, we can kind of get through our bad days and be a little bit less productive and it sucks and it annoys us but we're not about to like completely lose and publicly fail or get knocked out. Yeah. I think it depends on how much you love what you're doing too. Like most builders do that just to make a a living. So they don't much care how much people love their brick walls compared to Tom's brick walls. (laughs) You know, they, they don't, 
<laughs> they don't care, but let's say like they really love masonry and they're just masonry nerds and like that is a calling and their family's done it for, I don't know, a thousand years. They might actually be like, my wall's not as good as Ian's. Mm. <laughs> I can't live with that. I've been, I come from a long line of masonry men. I must make my wall better than Ian's. <laughs> is, you know, like I think. It, is, it wrong, is it wrong that I want to see a despondent mason now? Because <laughs> I've never seen that in my life. But but right oh, now, like, no, I think if we that, love that, what that, we're that. doing. We care more about being better. Like mm -hmm. no, I I agree. Although um, to your point, I think that might explain the entire British workforce in terms of like uh, fixing our roads and stuff like that. Because there's some countries I visit where it's like done in days, and with our guys, no offense if you got like a spouse or something. But on the whole, you drive past for weeks and weeks and weeks, and people are just standing around and not like fixing the road. So maybe it isn't that they're lazy or useless. Maybe they've got imposter syndrome <laughs> the same way <laughs> as like creatives passionate. where it's like, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm just not sure this road is going to be as good as my buddy's road down the, uh, <laughs> down the road. Well, you guys yeah. got those amazing <laughs> cobblestone roads too. We have very few of those and they're so good that I'm just like, wow, we're really hacking it over here when we just like dump a bunch of asphalt in the ground and then smooth it out. <laughs> 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 in our houses, you can like punch a hole in the wall like it's a paper bag. You guys make them out of like stone, so like they stand for a thousand years. I mean, man, I'm I'm just like, for God's sake, take some pride in your work, America. <laughs> it's because it's because uh, we all live in castles uh, in the UK. That's true. That is yeah, true. in Dustin's imagination of England, I mean, really, it's like boring tarmac roads most of the place. But but isn't it true in your though, head? It's like Diagon Alley. Stone? Isn't that more like I feel like houses around there tend to stand for a long time. You you can live in a hundred and fifty year old house. You don't. You hardly ever mm. get a house built out of wood. Like the whole thing out of wood. It's such yeah. a rarity. It's because it rains so much. It would just get all mouldy. Mm. It wouldn't <laughs> yeah. last. No, I mean it wouldn't we, last the weather through. We only even do our frame out of wood. The rest of it's just like sheetrock, pretty much that you can like kick a hole in. Like if I want a new window, <laughs> I, I can just like run into my wall by accident. Is it is that why you can get a bigger house for the sort of same amount of money we can oh, I'm you know, sure. get a tiny house? I'm sure, dude. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, well, that's actually a pretty solid sound. Yeah, I mean... There's they, some pretty, there's they, some pretty they, hollow areas. <laughs> Good way to prove your point. I, I love if your hand just went straight for it. <laughs> it's like a like, Roman column in a stone. <laughs> oh, you guys are funny. I, I can see where it went last week. Must have been all yeah. over the place. Okay, right. Back to the topic. <laughs> yeah. all right, let's rein it back in. All right, so for, for designers, um, we have touched on some of this stuff. We've touched on imposter syndrome quite a bit. We've touched on um, creative block quite a bit. But I, I guess we wanted to look at a more holistic overview of just the impact of mindset because all of these things are prone to happen at various points. But like, would you guys agree it is like the whole game when it comes to your output? Like over and above everything else Def is well, your mindset. Yeah, I think I'm agreeing with that 100%. I mean, if you think mm -hmm. about it, why do you think sports people, professionals invest so much time and energy into the psychological side of things? I mean, they have just psychological coaches for that. Yeah, just self in self-indulgence, I think, Lisa. Oh, come on. Just too much money. No, no I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah. That's all right. That's, that's a perfect case in point, though. That yeah. has been proven to elicit incredible results. Exactly. I mean, when, when those runners, you know, hit the so-called wall, you know, they dig deep and they, have, you know, th that kind of stuff is like psychological to actually get you to move forward to the next, you know, finish the next kilometer. And yep. I think I think it's the same for us. I think we, I think it's more, a little bit more complicated for us, if I can say that, because we're putting ourselves out there. So it feels a little bit harsher and more personal, um, which makes it a little bit more difficult. And I think we can get easier into that funk of i'm not good enough this isn't working this is, looks like a pile of shit no one's gonna like it and so on and so that's so it's so easy to get there um mixed with the mm -hmm. fact that you've got a whole lot of other stresses going on like you, you need to make a living you're not getting you know money in for the to pay the bills etc so yeah it's definitely easier to get down that hole i think with well, creative people I, but i think there's oh sorry that you're done there no no no. i was just gonna say but i think if you if you have a stronger way of getting yourself out of it like in other words you have to exercise that muscle just like anything else and you can't just ignore those things i think you need to get good at teaching yourself how to get out of it sooner mm -hmm. Go for it, dustin yeah yeah i think like just like a mind uh to to add on to that just 
something that um, I think we all do in some way or another is you kind of say to yourself, well, anything's better than nothing. I think that all the time to myself, you know, I, I could do this podcast or I could not do it or I could release this product and it could bomb. But even if it bombed, it's better to have a product bomb or to do this thing. And at least I have it on my track record that I did something as opposed to just sit there, you know? Yep. Dustin, it's better to do two short episodes than break consistency and not put out any value. That's for real. Yeah. Uh, it's really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so true. Yeah, I, I'm so glad uh, Lisa mentioned like the hole that you get in mentally as well because that is so true. Mm-hmm. We've all felt that. I've I've had that recently, and there's been like so much going on and so many places to spin that it almost triggers like anxiety. And yeah, almost, it definitely. <laughs> does. Yeah, okay, it definitely does. I'm thinking yeah. I'm thinking of like panic attack with the girlfriend being like, "It's gonna be okay." Um, <laughs> And and when you're in that space, I think it's um, important. Like if you look at it objectively, which you can only do in hindsight, you realize nothing has actually really changed. Yeah. So like the whole setup is the same. Like my work, my company is the same. Day to day is the same. Like no one's died. Like the whole situation, all the nuts and bolts are the same. But in one instance, I will feel terrible and like I'm going to die. And in other instances, I feel like great and can tackle anything and super creative and focused and inspired. Mm. And it's kind of the same as outlook. So, you know, if you're in a bad mood, then you notice all the bad stuff around you and that perpetuates. And if you've got real positive outlook, then it tends to work the other way. But the day is the same. You could literally live the same day with all the same stuff happening. And it would be, yeah, yeah, it's your experience, right? It's your perception. And so I think that, that for me is why mindset is so powerful because um it's literally it's as if it were two different days absolutely or in this case like two creative projects or two client client yeah. projects or whatever and it's like that that's what i was saying it's so important to know yourself well enough to know what you need to get out of it because i mean if we just take two kids for example they grew up in the same environment but their experiences of the same um you know living in conditions and fa- family and parents etc could be completely and utterly different for the two of them and and they could be scarred on the one hand and the other person doesn't know what you know what are you on about i never experienced that and and you can't undermine that because that is that person's experience so i think i think we need to give ourselves a break like even though i know a lot of us go well this person doesn't have a job so i must just snap out of it and get on with it and stop whining about my situation and because it's not that bad but at the same time Sometimes you need to also take a break and you need to like be kinder to yourself because I think this whole mm-hmm. mentality of like we got to hustle 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 it's it's garbage and I think yeah. you know it's like we we are really like digging early graves if we're going to constantly like be on the run the whole time and sometimes you do just need a break and especially if your mental state isn't all that great I think you do need to take a break I know it's a lot of people are saying, but I can't afford it. I can't do this. But at the same time, you have to realize that if you're sick or have a mental breakdown, then you really can't earn a living for mm-hmm. a long time. And and you know what? You will never um, be in a place where it's like, oh, I can afford it. Because whether you're starting out and you're really financially struggling, it's no yeah. different because we all experience this stuff and we are like on paper successful yeah. in a lot of people's eyes, I would say. Um, it that doesn't matter a damn like that's completely irrelevant you don't reach a certain point where it's okay to feel like that yeah if anything it gets what it gets worse like it's kind of a curse it's like the more you have going on and and if you are perhaps more successful yeah yeah. thanks so much for listening to this week's episode as always you can find full show notes over at honestdesigners.com or find us over on itunes and now spotify by searching for the honest designers show and remember we're now on social media too if you search for honest designers if today's episode helped you then it would mean the world to us if you took just a moment to leave us a quick review over on itunes as this is one of the best ways for other designers to discover the show Thanks again for tuning in and we will see you next week right here on the Honest Designers Show.